Hello everyone, welcome back to another Kinetic Tutoring video. Today we're looking at the 2023 AP test. This is question one from set one. So let's get straight into it. A system consists of a small sphere of mass M and radius R at rest on a horizontal surface in a uniform rod of mass M is equal to 2M at length L attached at one end to a pivot with negligible friction where R is much smaller than L. There is negligible friction between the surface and the sphere to the right of point A and non-negligible friction to the left of point A. The rod is held out horizontally as shown in figure one, then released from rest. The total rotational inertia of the rod about the pivot is one third ML squared, and the rotational inertia of the sphere about its center is two fifths MR squared. After the rod is released, the rod swings down and strikes the sphere head on. As a result of this collision, the rod is stopped and the ball initially slides without rotating to the left across the horizontal surface. Derive an expression for the angular speed of the rod just before striking the sphere in terms of the length L and physical constants as appropriate. Alright guys, so the way we're going to do this is by applying our knowledge on torque. So let's write out our torque equation. We know that our basic torque equation is I alpha is equal to force times radius. Now let's take a look at what our force is. That's going to be gravity, mg. Make sure to keep in mind that the mass of the rod is 2m, so 2mg. And R is where the force is affecting the rod, which is going to be at its center of mass, which is going to be at the center of the rod at length L over 2 and here the alpha stays the same we can plug in the inertia of the rod which we know is one third ml squared here we go so from here we can cancel out one of the L's and we can also get rid of our M's and additionally we see that we have a one half and a two in here so we can get rid of those all that's left is G on this side and one third L on this side. One third L alpha rather. And now we, from here we can solve for alpha and we'll get three G over L. And from here we can see that our acceleration is a constant because gravity is not changing and neither is the length of the rod. Therefore we can apply our kinematics equations Let's see. We know we have this base kinematic equation. V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2AD. But we can tweak this in order for it to fit in the rotational form. So that will give you omega final squared is equal to omega initial squared plus 2 alpha theta. And from here we can solve for our omega final squared and then find our omega final. We know our omega initial is zero, zero squared is still zero. So we'll get that omega final squared is equal to two alpha, which is three G over L. So six G over L times theta, the degree of change, which we know is 90 degrees, what written in radians is going to be pi over 2. This 2 and the 6 cancel out, so we get 3. So we find that omega final squared is going to be 3g pi over L, meaning that our omega final is square root of 3g pi over L. So as this completes its 90 degree turn, this rotational speed that it hits the ball with is the square root of 3g pi over L. Let's move on to the next page. Erase all this here, but keep the 3g pi over L because this comes in pretty useful. Because part B asks us to derive an expression for the linear speed V of the sphere immediately after colliding with the rod in terms of the length L. So guys, we know, let's find this in terms of linear speed first. 
Um, so since we know this is the angular speed, the way to convert that to linear speed is by uh, using our equation V is equal to R omega. So in order to convert it to linear speed, all you need to do is multiply it by the radius, which in this case is L. We have a let L to the first power on the top and an L to the one half power on the bottom, which will leave you with a L to the one half power to the top. So the speed of the rod is going to be root L, or sorry, rather th root three L G pi. And from here we can use the laws of momentum. We know that the mass of the rod is two M and the mass of the ball is just m, and then we have a velocity that we're not sure of. So boom, boom. And so from here we can find out that the velocity of the ball is going to be two times the velocity of the rod. It's the same thing, you just double it because the ball weighs half as much. All right, so let's take a look at the other parts of the problem. After sliding a short distance, at time t is equal to zero, the sphere encounters a region of the horizontal surface with a coefficient of kinetic friction mu. Beginning at point A, as indicated in figure one, the sphere begins rotating while sliding and eventually begins to roll without sliding at point B, as also indicated. The following diagram, which represents the sphere while the sphere is traveling between points A and B, Draw and label the forces, not components, that act on the sphere. Each force must be represented by a distinct arrow starting on and pointing away from the application, of, the point of application on the sphere. All right, guys. So there's three forces acting on our ball. We of course have gravity, force of gravity acting on the bottom of the ball and going downwards. We have the normal force, which is acting, or sorry, the gravity rather is acting on the center of the ball the normal force is acting on the bottom and then finally we have our frictional force and since the ball is rolling this way frictional force is going to be for facing the opposite direction so there you have that and now it asks us to find the linear velocity of the center of mass of the sphere as a function of time t so in order to do that, we see that the only horizontal force is friction, and we know that the force of friction is equal to n mu n. And we also know that since it's the only force in the horizontal direction, then that's the net force, so ma is equal to mu n. And our normal force can also be written as mg. And from here, the m's cancel out. So we can see that our acceleration is mu g. Now, if we were to integrate this, because we know this is dv dt, we'll, we will end up with the velocity v equals mu g t plus c. And this c is going to be our v0 as given here. So let's just write this here. V is equal to mu g t plus V initial. But then when you think about it, the friction is going to be slowing down the object. So we're going to make this negative because it starts at a constant positive value and then it keeps decreasing until the velocity reaches zero due to friction. Now let's take a look at part D2, where it's asking us for the angular velocity omega of the sphere as a function of time t. The sphere starts not spinning, so therefore the c in this case is going to be zero. But let's take a look at the, at the, um, the, uh, rotational acceleration and find use that to find the rotational speed so we know that we have our i alpha once again force radius your radius is just going to be radius your force is going to be mu mg mu mg r and you have your alpha 
you can divide by inertia, which is given to us as 2 fifths m r squared. Cancel out some terms. Flip this 2 fifths, it will get 5 mu g over 2 r. And here you go, here's your acceleration. Integrate to find omega, that will give you omega is equal to 5 mu g over 2r times t. And the reason why this is positive is because the omega is going to be increasing. We know that the ball begins not rolling and it ends rolling. So let's go to the final page. I'm going to erase most of this stuff here but I'm going to keep these pieces just because they are crucial to the next steps alright next part wants us to find an expression for the time t it takes for the sphere to travel to point A to point B and we know that the significant thing about point B is that that's when the circle starts the ball starts uh, um, rotating without slipping rolling without slipping and we know that when some, an object begins rolling without slipping its velocity is equal to its rotational speed so we can just set these equations together equal to each other v would be equal to r omega so we'll get minus mu gt plus v initial is equal to this times r so we'll get 5 mu g t over 2 from here we can add this over we'll get 7 halves mu g t is equal to v initial and our final step is to get t all by itself so we'll get 2 v initial over 7 mu g is equal to the t and there you have it there's your expression for t and let's take a look at the final part it is asking us to find a, an expression for the linear velocity and we already have an expression for the velocity at a certain at any given time that is v initial minus mu g t so all you need to do is just plug in the t to get that get the velocity at that specific time v initial minus mu g times 2 v initial over 7 mu g mu g's cancel out two seven, v initial minus 2 sevenths v initial will give you 5 sevenths v initial and there you go that's how you solve that part of the problem so this so the speed of the ball goes down to 5 sevenths of the original speed due to the friction that has affected it there you have it that's how you would solve all parts of this problem i hope this helped make sure to tune in again soon for more physics tutorials and if you have any questions make sure to leave them down below in the comments